Are you ready to learn how to not make the biggest mistakes when starting your private practice? Well, that is what we are going to cover today. Hey guys, it's Adrian Pexosa here. Um, if you don't know me, well, we should definitely get to know each other and be besties. Um, uh, I'm a registered dietitian and certified eating disorder dietitian and owner of I Love Well Nutrition, a clinic here in Austin. And I Love Well Business Academy, which is a group, I'm sorry, <laughs> the Business Academy is an online academy that you learn at home how to create and build a private practice. So today we're going to talk about the top three biggest mistakes that I see time and time again when somebody is starting their private practice. And for those that stick around to the very end of this broadcast, I've got a super ridiculous uh, free gift for you. Um, and if you're watching this on the recording, high five to you. Thank you guys so much. Uh, please don't hesitate to leave comments or questions. I always go back and make sure all your questions are answered. So I want this to be super interactive and you guys get the most out of it because this is why I'm here. For you i want you i really truly believe in the bottom of my heart that there should be more and more people in private practice because um to really help somebody they need that one-on-one -on -one attention as opposed to maybe one time seeing somebody in a hospital that's not effective like let's be real so let's dive into the goodies today so the first like ridiculously big mistake that everybody makes is they keep it to themselves. Like whenever you're starting a private practice, people are like, I don't wanna tell people because like, what if it's not successful? Like, ooh, like what if I make a mistake? What if like other people in private practice find out and they like call me out on being like this huge fraud? Like I need to like keep it quiet. No, 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 no. Tell everybody, tell people at your hospital, well first, Check to make sure it's not a conflict of interest. Check in with your HR. But then tell everybody, tell the physicians that you're working with, tell the other dietitians, tell the other staff members that, hey, I'm, uh, I'm working on starting a private practice. Um, let me know if you, uh, once I get going, I'll definitely let you know more about it. I am so excited to do this and I can't wait to share more with you. And I promise, like, when you share your excitement with somebody, everybody around you is going to be just as excited as you are. I promise, 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 promise. Uh, so tell everybody, tell them why you're doing it. Tell them like where you're thinking about having an office, like who your clients are, like tell them everything. Talk about it. Even talk about it with other people in private practice. So reaching out to everybody in your area that's in private practice and letting them know like, hey, did you know I'm about to start a private practice? I am so excited. Let me shut my computer because it's going to make some dinging noises uh, <laughs> and it'll distract me from you. Uh, and I don't want that. I want to give you guys my full attention. Um, so tell everybody. So reaching out to people in your community that are already in private practice, reaching out and just talking about it, posting it on social media, and just saying, hey guys, I'm about to start something crazy exciting, and I can't wait to share more with you. Like, everybody wants to live in a positive and excitement uh, realm, so share that with others. I think that's totally doable and awesome. So number one, biggest mistake is keeping it to yourself. So I want you guys, because we're not going to make mistakes that somebody else made when they first started, uh, is I want you guys to let everybody know what you're doing and really be authentic with your excitement uh, and your nervousness. Like, I think that's totally, totally normal. Number two biggest mistake, and I think this is kind of twofold, is um, when anybody's starting out or trying something new, we kind of fall into a couple different categories. So somebody is either like me and will just jump into something and like, yes, I'm going to do this and full steam ahead and I'm just gonna jump and do it and I'll figure it out later. 
Um, and what usually happens when we jump in and not think about things and have a plan and the, the right steps is we mess up or we have to go back and clean up our steps or we have to like rework things because we didn't have a plan and we just jumped because we were maybe FOMO or we were just so excited that we just couldn't contain our excitement. Um, so there are the jumpers. The next group of people are the procrastinators, or sorry, not procrastinators, perfectionists, where they want everything perfect. That blog post has to be immaculate with no spelling errors, with like perfect punctuation. That Facebook Live has to have like the best lighting and this and that. And I can't have my website until I have a brand and a name and I can't have a practice until the paperwork is perfectly blah, blah, blah. And so they don't ever do jack crap because nothing is going to be perfect. And so they are stuck and they're frozen and they take zero action. And then the third type, and we're all going to choose to be this, is the tortoise, where the tortoise had a plan and it's like laid out pretty strategically in the right order and we move one thing, okay, that one's done, and then we move the other thing, okay, that one's done, and then the next thing, okay, that one's done. And so it's a slow but steady plan and it's not like sparkly and shiny and it's not perfect. Uh, it's just the right order with the right steps and really thoughtful. So having this kind of mind shift of not being a jumper and not being a procrastinator perfectionist, but being the tortoise is really where I want you to be. So honest truth, when I first started out, holy bananas, I jumped on every bandwagon known to man. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to do ads in magazines. I'm going to do ads in here and I'm going to just wasted gazoodles amount of money and did not do my research, did not spend the time and I paid for it. And I do not want that for you guys. I really do believe that this is easy, so easy and it can be done. And you guys definitely know this for me because I am not a perfectionist. Um, I and not detail oriented at all. If things are spelled right, if they are punctuated perfectly, that is not uh, my first draft. That is definitely my third or fourth draft and somebody else has looked at it. Um, so I want you to not be a jumper. You can be a reformed jumper like I am or a reformed perfectionist, but I really want you to embrace this methodical um, tortoise mindset of, okay, I'm going to do one thing and I'm going to check it off my list. And then I'm going to do the next thing and check it off my list. I'm going to do the non sparkly, shiny unicorn things because that's what has to get done. And I need that great foundation in order for this successful, amazing private practice to actually go somewhere. So I want you to today make that promise, make that commitment that you are going to like totally like let go of perfectionism, let go of the FOMO, let go of just jumping and be a reform jumper, be a reform perfectionist and do the steps and do them in the, the right order and really take the time. So let me know, leave me a comment below and let me know if you are a jumper, if you know that about yourself I'm a jumper. I am now a reform jumper. Um, let me know if you're a perfectionist. Let me know if you're kind of a mix. Um, sometimes I kind of, when I was noticing that I would jump into things, I would, I started to notice like, oh, I need to calm down and like have a better plan. But then I get excited and I have to do something else. And then I have to calm down. And, uh, and so noticing those things about yourself is also really important too. So leave me a comment below and let me know what you are. Are you a jumper? Are you a perfectionist? Or are you a tortoise? And kind of let me know what kind of lifestyle personality is you. So the third biggest mistake that I see over and over and over when starting a private practice 
is people isolate and they just kind of whenever they're out networking and talking they just like have their cards or they go to a networking event and they're super nervous and they just kind of keep to themselves or they uh, once they're in their practice they go and do their work and they just kind of have blinders on they don't see the community around them um, and that is a huge mistake so when you start a private practice when you are in it and it's like flowing and rocking I really want you to get to know your get to know your community and give back to your community that will give back tenfold to you personally and to your heart, but also to your company. You're there to serve your community. So if the community doesn't know about you, how are you supposed to serve them? So going out and meeting people outside of your scope, going and meeting chiropractors, um, personal trainers, other people in the ancillary health and wellness field. Um, I used to always go and meet other nutritionists and dietitians because they might do something I would never do. They might do something, oh gosh, um, GI stuff. I, I, I know some stuff about GI, but I don't wanna know it all. So getting to know your community. When you go to networking events, even if you are an introvert, do your best to meet one or two new people. And that's it, like you don't have to meet everybody. You don't have to be the social butterfly that some of us really really enjoy, um, <laughs> hence why I'm on social media everywhere. Uh, but really giving yourself that permission to build your community. Uh, one of the things I always hear a lot of people talk about when they're starting a private practice or thinking about starting a private practice is they're worried they're gonna be all alone. Well, that's a bunch of baloney. I can't tell you that uh, you're gonna have tons of office mates, but I can tell you if you work at building your community, um, your people, the people that are in your area to support you, you're going to have a wealth of support and colleagues to run things by. So it is up to you to make that commitment to go out and meet people. But it's also a huge false, um, false idea, I guess, um, that you're going to be alone. I mean, you are if you put your blinders on and just like, I'm doing the work, I'm seeing patients, I'm doing nothing else. Yeah, you're totally gonna be alone and miserable and not love it. But if you go out and meet your community and get to know the people around you and make time for it, oh, your bucket is gonna be so full and you're gonna be able to give back to the community so much. And remember, that's why we're here, is we're here to serve our clients and to really make a difference in their lives. So let me know if these are some of the top mistakes you have thought about, or maybe it's a fear. Um, or let me know if there's another thing that maybe you've tried and you're like, that was the worst thing ever. So for those of that stuck around to the very end, awesome, thank you, you made my day. You just filled me up with joy. But the big bonus is I am offering um, anybody that stuck around to the very end a free 10 to 15 minute consult where you we can get on the phone on Skype on whatever uh, Google live Facebook whatever I don't I don't know the Googles and the Facebook's chatting um, and I will answer questions for you so all you have to do is either put your email in the comments below or Facebook message me privately and we will set up a time for a free 10 to 15 minute consult and I'll answer any questions you might have. Cause I really like, I want you to know like, dude, I got your back. I really want you to be successful in this and I want you to really have an amazing practice. So what I can do is offer some time, some <laughs> years of wisdom in this. And so please don't hesitate to reach out and let's find a time to chat. So have a fabulous rest of your day, make great decisions, and I will see you guys when, when, when am I seeing you? Friday. I will see you on Friday because we're doing this again for our last free training that's going to rock your socks. Bye guys.